So yesterday, one of our members posted an interesting question about whether or not she's the rebound girl, and that's the title of this. Um, and what, let me just give you some backstory. So she's been dating a man for a little while, and um, they've now um, have added each other to their Facebook page. And while she was looking at his Facebook page, she saw pictures from his previous relationship that ended about uh, three, three to four months ago. Um, and then she, out of curiosity, went to her Facebook page and saw that those same pictures were up. So she's now wondering, is she in that space of what we call a rebound person? And I thought this would be an interesting conversation to talk about how men might feel about a past relationship and how this also affects those that are in a transition in their life. Because there's also another terminology for a woman who is in a man's space or life where it's a transition until he meets another woman. In fact, I did a video on this, why one man, why a man might choose one woman over another. So here's the challenge with this conversation is when, especially, and from what I understand, the woman broke up with this man. So she was the one who ended the relationship. Uh, let me see if there was something additional she added. Um, so, and then I want to talk about why the pictures are still on and whatnot. So um, when, a, when a man, okay, when a man ends the relationship with a woman, he oftentimes kind of wants to uh, erase her from his life. Okay. And that's not, I mean, not necessarily, a, well, for some men, if they were divorced, they definitely want to erase that person from their life. But if they are the ones who ended the relationships, most men, not most men, but a significant percentage of men will want to actually erase that person from his life. Okay. I just repeated myself. The challenge is when she breaks up with him, especially if he cared for her deeply, and I know this even happened in my most significant relationship after my divorce. Um, well, while we both mutually ended it, it was still very much a challenge for me to get over it. In fact, I think men who have been the ones who got broken up on tend to have a harder time healing than women. I think women have a better, I, and now this is just my belief system, women can heal because they go seek help more often than men. OK, so I, from what I understand, he dated this woman for about a year and she ended it. And so these pictures are still up and then they're still up on her page. This is the tricky part about social media, quite frankly, you know, I it take me forever to go back and delete pictures or just even know how to put them in private mode. So I wouldn't necessarily hyper focus on why those pictures are there because most people aren't savvy in the um, social media scheme of things. I mean, believe me, I'm sometimes just trying to figure out how to post a picture is a pain in the butt. Okay. So but with that said, does he still care for her? And are you possibly the rebound person? Or as we also know as the transition relationship. Now, for those who men who have gone through a divorce, Oftentimes, and I want to differentiate divorce because when you've made a commitment, you did wedding vows, you expressed your love, and all of a sudden this relationship unravels, if you will. Many people feel a hole inside of them and they immediately want to fill that hole. So men, you know, human beings want companionship, they want connection, they want sex, and yet they may not be in a space to actually want a commitment. And this is where there's, we have to differentiate casual relationships and hookups versus a fully committed relationship. And I suspect a significant percentage of people who have gone through a divorce aren't really capable of fully committing to someone new. And yet those desires of companionship, connection, and sex might make them believe that they want what we call a relationship. And quite frankly, when you have companionship, connection with sex with a person, that is a relationship of sorts. The challenge is the word relationship. Are we forging something for the long term or are we just 
taking advantage of each other until something better comes along. And that's why it's called a transition relationship. Because what happens for a significant percentage of men, and I'm speaking from my own truth here. I know after my divorce, um, it's funny, I had one woman say, um, I emailed a woman on a dating site and she said, how long you've been divorced? I said, five months. And she says, reach after, reach out to me after you've been divorced for 18 to 24 months and you've had one to two transition relationships. I'm like, well, I'm ready for a relationship. I'm ready for a relationship. I'm ready for a relationship. She goes, just that's my, that's my criteria for meeting you. Sure enough, the next woman I met really liked her really liked her. We dated for three months and I hit my wall and my wall, my emotional wall, because I recognized I wasn't ready. Not on a necessarily conscious level. I think my subconscious said, put the brakes on because I was still on some level that need of companionship, connection, and sex, but I wasn't, which I thought was a relationship. But what I didn't understand was that wasn't full commitment. That wasn't progressing some, for something long term. So this is where many of you ladies, you have to really dig deep in asking what a commitment, what does commitment mean to you? What does, what does commitment look like for you? What does a relationship look like for you, both short term and long term? Are you seeking a life mate? And this is where it's tricky for a lot of men because we want companionship, we want connection, we want sex. On some level, we think that is long term. But until we've done some inner work, until we've healed from our past relationships, we might only be capable for casual relationships, which oftentimes puts women in that, or men, in that category of being what's known as a transition relationship. Or we call it, it used to be called rebound. In other words, uh, rebounding is you had something end and you, bound, re, you hit the floor, bound, go back out and put yourself out there. This is why I'm such a big proponent of having deeper conversations in the early uh, period of dating. This is why I created my dating vows. Here's a copy of it. By the way, you can go to jonathanaslay.com forward slash dating vows or dating vow. I can't remember if it's vows or vow. And, and here's how it goes. And I'm really encouraging you to adopt this. Okay. Before you are physically intimate or soon after if you're physically intimate. Because have you ever heard the saying, women are the gatekeepers of sex and men are the gatekeepers of commitment. So the dating vow is just something you express to one another that goes something like this. I agree to explore the process of getting to know you with the intent to declare something serious within the next three to six months. I agree to be monogamous sexually while we're having regular sex together. I agree to not actively seek to meet and date others while we're in the dating process, including taking down our dating profiles. I agree to speak up if this isn't working for me versus ghosting, pulling away, or disappearing. I agree to invest regular time in the process to get to know you, which looks something like this. Spending two, three, four days and nights a week together, doing shared activities, hobbies, mutual interests, spending time with family and friends, traveling together, teamwork, building skills, both in our personal and our professional life, intimacy, both physical and emotional intimacy that leads to either moving in together or getting married. Okay. Now, let me just say something, and this is not, an, this is simply an opinion. 90% of men will bail on this. Because there are thousands of women who will have sex with men without any agreement or any form of commitment. Okay. You know what, ladies, you need to all band together and say, we are going to request the dating. You know, it used to be if men wanted to get laid, they had to get married. And you did something called the marriage vows. And in that, you declared something very similar to this. So why aren't we doing the same now? Because as this corny saying is, for men, why buy the cow if you get the milk for free? And I know that's gross to say that. But at the same time, what's the, uh, why have your cake? Why not have your cake and eat it too kind of thing? I mean, look at having self-respect 
means actually vetting the person. This is why I do my private coaching. By the way, there's a link below to schedule a discovery call with me. Why do I do this? Is to help you do a better job of vetting for those men who are genuinely serious and not gonna treat you as a rebound or re transition relationship. And more importantly, you stand in your power. And by the way, my book, What the Heck is Self-Love Anyway? This is a journey of personal development, self-help, spiritual work. So you begin to stand in your power and not accept crumbs from a man, not to accept a man who is actually incapable of leaning into a relationship. Like a transition relationship can oftentimes happen because he hasn't healed from his past relationship. So coming back to this man who has pictures, is that an indication that you're the rebound person? Maybe, it could be maybe true. Also could mean that he just doesn't know how to do, you know, on his Facebook page, doesn't know how to put things on private. Maybe there's too many pictures. Uh, why does she have those pictures on? You know, maybe it's to, um, you know, to make other men jealous. Who knows why? Is the why really that important? What matters most is, are the two of you forging a relationship together? Are the two of you leaning into a co-creative experience. Folks, I'm here to encourage everyone is stop approaching the, the mating process from an ambivalent or ambiguous way. I'm here to encourage intentional dating. I'm here to encourage more intimacy through vulnerability, through authenticity, through transparency. I know many of my contemporaries will scoff at me. I know many of my contemporaries will say, this is garbage. You need to just, everything needs to be casual in the beginning. You know the problem with casual in the early stages? You get attached to the wrong person. And, and it's interesting because one of my contemporaries who's a male dating coach says, give a man six weeks, okay? Do you know, in six weeks, you can become incredibly attached. And if that relationship doesn't work out, that can be emotionally devastating to your heart. And by the way, I'm not suggesting you don't give six weeks, but six weeks of just, let's just have fun. Let's keep it light. We'll just ask surface questions like, how's your day going? Did you have a good day? I hope you had a good day. Surface, a six week surface relationship can easily cause someone to be attached. And let me tell you something. The number one emotional health issue most facing most everyone is, I'm not good enough. I'm not lovable. I'm not likable. Do you know what happens when a short-lived relationship ends? It wears on our self-esteem. Now, got to brush ourselves off, just like Steve Harvey says, act like, a la act like a lady, think like a man, because men can be a bit more dismissive. That's kind of, you know, it's kind of a sad on our part that we can dismiss this because we don't, we, don't, we don't bond the same way women do when you're sexual with someone. And this is why I'm a big proponent is you stand in your power and don't accept bad behavior. And so to determine if you're the rebound person, I'm here to say, lay your cards on the tables, get radically honest with one another and with the dating vows, establish the rules of engagement. So you know you're both on the same page because let me tell you something, if he's just in, he wants that companionship, he wants that connection, he wasn't that wants that sex, but he's not capable of commitment. Boy, you're investing in a you're investing in the lottery. Let's just say the lottery. And how often do people win the lottery? All right, is this making sense? Is this resonating with you? Please let me know. Please post a comment below. If you found value in this, please tell your friends about midlife love mastery. Send them to my website, jonathanasley.com. Have them click the group coaching button so you so they can join our fantastic group. And I'm going to sign off this video as I always do. First off, give myself a big gigantic job at the barrack of self-love. I'm going to reach into the camera and give you a hug of love if that's okay. I'm going to ask you to turn to someone, a pet, a teddy bear, a pillow. Give it or them a hug of love because hugs are a great source of love. And let's face it, we could all use more love in our lives. Thanks a bunch. Bye-bye now. Bye-bye.